Hello and welcome to today's video. Po first of all, apologies for the delay in videos here. Went on a little vacation and just found it tough to get back into making YouTube videos. I've still been doing the live streams and so forth, but haven't made any videos for the YouTube, but they should be coming back to normal here. I have a lot to get through, at, such as this video right here. So in the last home video or the do-it-yourself video here, we made the rain barrel stand to sit the rain barrel in and it came out pretty well. But now that we have the rain barrel, it's time to use that rainwater in our butterfly garden. So I plan to do this for a while now, just finally getting down to it and getting it done. So I'm doing this around the existing bird feeding station project as a great place for birds, bees, butterflies, and bugs. This will also be the centerpiece in the backyard and be pretty nice to look at outside the back window. As you can see, I did some prep before starting this video and mapped out the garden using some landscaping rocks. I also hand tilled about half the garden since as I found out, hand tilling is a decent amount of work and Florida is pretty hot at this time. As you can see here, it was also pretty dry. Um, but we start here by tilling the second half of the garden and getting all the old grass roots out. Some other options would have been to put down some landscaping material or cardboard and then not even worry about the tilling part or it's called no tilling gardening. Uh, but I wanted to keep the soil as, you know, this, you know, Florida soil is more sand than anything, but I want to get the grass out and use that soil instead of putting a whole bunch of topsoil on top here. Uh, and a goal of this garden was to focus on planting Florida native plants. For the bird feeder decor, as you can see, I used some simple box store plants, but I'm sticking to Florida native from now on for the most part. There are some asterisks here and there. And like, because for any pollinators or seed dispersing plants, you really want to focus on growing what is found in your native environment. It's also honestly easier to grow those plants because they're adapted to grow in like Florida environments. Sometimes native plants get a bad rep though because they look more like weeds. And you'll see that in some of the plants we plant today. But personally, I love the look of them and I'm noticing as they're beginning to bloom here that the flowers are also really nice as well. After finishing the tilling, I added two bags of compost manure just to add a tiny bit of nutrients to the soil. They weren't really needed, but I just kind of added them to fill a little bit of volume. They didn't really do much in the end. I then laid out all the plants and I could make separate videos going over each native plant. So do let me know if you want more information on these plants. I'm kind of just giving a quick rundown of the plants here and I'll, I'll throw in some info pictures here as I describe them. And so I took these pictures at the native nursery when I was buying them. And I always recommend, now that I've done this, definitely buy native and support your local native nurseries. So the rundown of the plants. I planted seaside, goldenrod, partridge pea, shiny leaf coffee, also known as wild coffee, American beautyberry, tropical salvia, damn yellow aster, yes, that's what it's called, blanket flower, black-eyed Susan, Firebush, also a note on firebush. I learned there's a difference between Florida native firebush and what is sold at your box store. So make sure, this is another reason to support your local growers. The box store said firebush. I thought I was buying regular firebush and that it was a native plant, but it actually wasn't the native version of firebush. So the F Florida native one has more red in the leaves and the leaves are slightly wider. Okay, continuing now, I also added shrimp plant, which isn't technically Florida native either, but it is considered Florida friendly, and it's a good uh, flowering plant for hummingbirds, so that's why I got it. Then the last plant that went into this garden for this video was giant ironweed. I also bought some white milkweed at this nursery, which is uh, Asclepias perennis. Uh, the next video, we're gonna be making the garden around the rain barrel and a lot of my milkweed is going to go in there. So we'll talk about milkweed a little bit more then, which is good for the monarch. So be on the lookout for that future video. So also note, this garden was finished the end of May, like May 29th, and right now it's mid July. So a lot has changed since then. And I did some rearranging and added some more plants during this time. So checked out another native nursery. And of course I bought a lot of plants while I was there. These plants include Lavenworth tick seed, which is the Florida State Wildflower, Frostweed, Purple Thistle, Blazing Star, and Stokes Aster. Uh, but I put some of those in the future Rain Barrel Garden as well, so we'll see some of those return. Then I just wanted to make a note that the final product here includes some plants that you don't see me laying out here, but that's where we are now. 
All right, now that all the plants are laid out, it's time to plant them. So when I planted them, I you know, dug the little hole, I made sure there were no big root knots in the plants, and then I made sure to water in my plants, adding lots of water in the plants as I went. Just slow and steady, maybe some rearranging of the plants as I laid them out and seeing how I like them. Taller plants in the middle is kind of how I went here with the beauty berries in the middle and some of the uh, wild coffee was a little larger at the time. No, these plants are gonna grow and seed and fill in this garden. So I'm not 100% sure what this is gonna look like in the end. Um, I'm Like right now I'm learning the giant ironweed actually gets pretty tall. It's almost as tall as the bird feeding station right now. So as I learn more about the plants and how to lay them out, things will change and just as long as you properly transplant them and so forth, should be good to go. I'm also doing a lot of cuttings and trying to grow new ones. So I've been experimenting with that too. And I have a whole bunch of little cutting growing on under my patio right now. And it's you know, kind of fun to play with that stuff. So I'm sure I'll be able to fill in the garden in all the areas around my house as I learn more about these plants and support the native habitat. After finishing getting the plants in, I then covered the area in some red mulch. Red mulch is my favorite color, so I spread that out across, made all the plants look nice, and organized it, watering it as I went, because the nice thing about mulch is that it retains moisture and also helps prevent weed growth. Now this isn't cedar mulch, so it shouldn't prevent bugs, because you know, this is a butterfly garden and we want bugs. I think this is just red colored mulch. It's not wasn't the fancy mulch or anything like that. So I laid all the mulch down, and here it is. Note here, the video was taken June 27th or something like that. So added some of the other plants there. You can see the Stokes Aster, the Purple Thistle and so forth. So it is a little different, but kind of shows how the garden is starting to fill in a little bit. And it's starting to look really good. I'm seeing some butterflies, seeing some caterpillars and all sorts of things loving that birds are loving the feeding station and it's just been great so far but that's all i have for this video today if you have any questions on making a florida native garden or a native garden in your area definitely let me know in the comments and in the next video we're going to be going into making a garden around the rain barrel we have now so keep on and look out for that and i'll see you then and thank you for watching have a great day and bye bye